Hello, everybody. McConaughey here. I'm about to have a little chat with uh, one of my favorite actresses, uh, dating all the way back to a role called Lori Darlin in Lonesome Dove, a woman who I got to finally work with a couple of years ago on a film Serenity. Um, she and her acting, uh, to me, seem to always be graceful, always dignified, always she is someone, I think, who leads from her heart. Uh, she's an actress that no matter how much she wants something, it seems that she never seems to trespass to in order to get it. She's also an actress who can teach us all a thing or two about making the quiet moments count. Diane Lane. That's lovely. I want to live up to that, Matthew. Thank you so much. I, I didn't write it. I just read it oh, from, from years oh. of watching you work. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. And and um, it's it's a pleasure to have any excuse to be with you. And um, my cup overrunneth. So thanks for having me. And um, I'm very proud of Let Him Go. And it's wonderful to have a film that you're proud of, right? Boy, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. It, it makes all this kind of thing like this to go out and talk about it so much easier and exciting, doesn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> well, um, I want to kick off um by reading some wonderful things that have been said about you and your performance here okay, okay so okay. i'm just gonna pick up again i didn't write this i just read it but now i'm gonna read it back um these are three reviews describing your role as margaret blackledge and let him go from the new yorker magazine quote this is diane lane's movie all the way she is as poised as ever and she can switch on the charm, but she radiates a force of purpose that will not be muffled, barked at, or repelled. Stand back. This is women's work. I sent the dogs in. I'm embarrassed <laughs> I sent the dogs in. All right, that's one. Here comes the second one from the Washington Post. This is Lane's movie, hands down, and the actress is never less than magnetic. And finally, this from Time Magazine, who named your, your performance as one of the top 10 best movie performances of the year, quote unquote, her character in Let Him Go could be a composite of adjectives, sturdy, stubborn, unstoppable. But as you watch the performance, all handy descriptors burn away. She is pure energy, a supreme example of acting that is invisible, even as it draws you closer to the flame. Okay. That's uh, okie dokie. I'm glad we're not doing theater because I wouldn't, I'd be afraid to hit the boards again, knowing it, the reviews, right? Isn't it, it, isn't it, doesn't it feel good or do, that you, that's when you know your art translates. Meaning like, I don't know, in pre-production when you were, when you were working on getting the character ready, you know, did you, if you were taking notes, you had an idea about who who, who Margaret was and, and who you wanted her to be and how you wanted to portray her. Do you hear anything in what these people say about your senior performance now that you're like, ah, oh, that's actually was some of my intention. You stole some of what I was going for. I don't know. I, I kind of rely on the texts of my good friends. They tell me the truth <laughs> and they were pleased. So I'm pleased, but you know, uh, all of the, uh, wonderful reviews aside, I mean, yes, the authenticity was what we were going for in terms of 1962 and a long-term marriage and, you know, the story of two people dealing with the unspeakable loss of their child and, and you know, you have individual responses to grief and then you have the couple now framed in something that is not supposed to be survivable. And that's in the first five minutes. This is not really a spoiler alert because um, it's really about getting our grandson back. And it's funny because a lot of people were sort of taken by surprise that I wanted to play a grandmother. I mean, they're a little underrepresented, don't you think? <laughs> sure. I mean, but, but, but why so? Why Margaret for you? And what is it that you wanted to explore? I think, well, just to be corny and admit what is the motivation here, right? Always. Um, but, you know, I, it, it, it was beyond the frontal lobe for me in terms of the, 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 the depth of her vision, her willingness to risk 
as much as she does in the course of the story um, and convince her husband to go with her and, and embark on this ill-advised uh, road trip to get their grandson back. Um, it, it's so primal. I, 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 and, and every moment is, is like sacred space because you're representing your deceased son to me. So I, yeah. felt, I felt that when I read it. Yes. And, it isn't that, you know, it, it's such a, a gift as an, as an actor to have something like that. You go, oh, no, it, it's so primal, my need that it's non-negotiable with the rest of the world or manners and means of what's going on. It's like, no, I, I, you'll go to the ends of time to get, try and get what you need to get to make happen. And it's, it's, I always talk about it in terms of like needs and not wants. I mean, it was a real need, you know, That's and true. it's very different. You can stick to a need and go further and have more right. clarity and even identity in a need than a want. And that was obvious. And, and it's shameless. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's shame less. Um, I got another question. Um, when or if did you feel that you sort of, that you had Margaret? Not mean when you got the job land or the gig, but when and was there a time when you knew her and who she was in you? Did you have that moment? And I ask that because I know from my experience, I'll have it sometimes a week before production. I'll sometimes find it the first day. Sometimes I'll find it a month in. Sometimes I finish and I still hadn't found it. Yeah, and sometimes you see it in the in the final product. Uh, sometimes I I learn things when it's all put together. The quilt is now a solid. Mm -hmm. All the all the pieces we've made of the quilt are put together, and it has music. And you go, oh, would have done that a little differently if I'd known there was going to be violins, but. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, a moment where, where, it, where it clicked for me. Um, honestly, I just felt grounded in her truth and it was so effortless. And because, you know, I was gifted with Kevin Costner's tenderness and, you know, he's an icon for a reason. <laughs> he, knows, he knows good material when he, when he mm -hmm. reads it. And so I, I, I just felt very um, connected in that umbilical cord sort of way, speaking of theater, when it's live, uh, yes. there's no, it felt like life or death. And, and part of me, when, when my breathing and, and my pulmonary system is attached, I know I'm in. I, I could never work on beta blockers. I wouldn't know if I were passing my own lie detector test or not, you know, <laughs> so yes. just saying. Oh. Yes, that's a little what I mean when I was saying earlier that you, you, for my eyes, always lead with your heart and your and 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 your and your, and your gut, um, and I see that across the board in your performances, uh, across the board from all of them that I've seen and the many that you have done. Um, I got a question here. This was this was one of my uh, and tell me if you remember this moment. Okay. Jimmy needed a mother. I could have been one of you, mm. but I wasn't. Mm. Thank you for that. For that, for, for reminding me of that moment. Um, yeah. Missed opportunities for tenderness. Yeah. That is, I mean, that's this year, 2020, yeah. for sure. We all miss opportunities to, we just crave them, don't we? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I should say last year, it's bleeding over. But this movie was a good gift from 2019. <laughs> right, right. It's been a tough haul for yeah. the entertainment industry. And, and so to, to have a film where somebody gets to express the fact that they wish they had been more present and wish they had been more sensitive and less selfish. And she can see her own pettiness, you know? And that's part of what I love about your performance of that line. Tell me what I saw. I didn't see, I saw something stronger than apology. an apology. I saw someone stating a fact. I'm not explaining this to you. I'm claiming, and I know it's what it was. I'm we're beyond, almost like it was like, we're beyond apologizing. This is just how it was. And damn on me too. Damn, shame on you and shame on me. It was a, a bit of a, that's what I saw that you didn't, and I love that choice. If it was a choice, that's what I got from it, that you were saying, this is a fact. And it, it was almost like there was not, it lacked a certain almost sentimentality that may have had the moment be, well, now shall we 
Well, right. and, or should we than an apology? Back. Right. You're stating the truth and you're, it's an admission of truth. I mean, yeah. owning it. Yeah. Yeah. Shortcomings. And it penetrated me as a viewer more that way. Um, because I actually felt more for you in that way. Um, that I don't know yet an ownership. See, that's what I love about grandmothers. They've lived enough to understand that it never ends the growing up process. Right. <laughs> and yeah. they, they get better. You get better at admitting your shortcomings as you go along. One hopes, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hope so. <laughs> um, you're an actress who, if you give a little to, you will give a lot back. Why are you still giving? I, I just said that's a compliment. Thank you. We had a little override. Oh, it, it, Did you want to well, respond? <laughs> Sorry. Why are you still giving? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> why, but why, I tried. Are you so, why are you so, so giving? Where does that come from? Um, because not everyone is hmm. the kind of giver that, 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 that you are. That's sweet. That uh, wow. I... I, I mm, that is tr true. I've been, I've been, I've danced with different partners and I found you to be incredibly giving as well when we had the opportunity to work together. And it is a joy when people don't feel the cost right. of their, you know, I don't have a miserly heart. That's, that's, that's not good. You want to give as much as you can while you can with what you've got and, 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 in support, I find my best work is on pe other people's close-ups because <laughs> I'm a little bit shy and that's mm -hmm. ridiculous to be an actress and feel that way, but that's what's going on. I'll just be honest. Sorry about that. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. <laughs> heard, heard. Um, Kevin Costner, you reach out to him. I did. Yeah. How'd that come about? You mean without even having my own production company? Who do I think I am? <laughs> I had a case of the, who do I think I am, Matthew, I admit it. But the material was strong enough and we wanted to aim as high as you can go. And it was a no brainer and I couldn't envision anybody but him playing the part. And the miracle was, was that he was available because he did want to do it, but he just didn't know how we were gonna be able to pull it off. And the sliver of time that we have is a small movie. It's a humble budget, you know, and, it's a period piece. So a lot of it went into creating the environment that we're in. Um, but I digress. Uh, Kevin, you know, he, his generosity, speaking of, it's sincere, you know, and when, when, and it's, it's super intentional. Mm -hmm. He will tell you why he is being generous. He doesn't want to just, you know, give it away he wants to make sure you get the message of why uh -huh. and he's all about appreciating and worthiness and things like that so he really appreciated the the screenplay and felt and we knew we wanted to work together again because we we had and we we parted ways on uh, man of steel saying we gotta do this again with more to work with because yes. we we felt it you know yes so uh that was the miracle <laughs> I have the I have the voicemail. I kept it. You do? You did? Yeah, I kept it. What? Because he because we were so hectic. He left it in a voicemail, and 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 that's why I say he's a tender person because he he outlined why he was saying yes and that he was going to make it work in his life, and it was an extremely generous reality for me. And I wouldn't be talking to you today if he hadn't, you know, uh, said yes. So, bravo. Yeah. Thank Bravo. you, Kevin. <laughs> Bravo. Yes, thank you, Kevin. Um, does it ever feel, in hindsight, or when you're looking in the rearview mirror of your life, that life's been preparing you for each next step in your work? Hmm. Do you see the math? I mean, almost, you know, sometimes we can see the math when we look in the rearview mirror of, oh, now I understand why I made that choice or what have you. Does it feel like life's sort of in any way preparing you for each next step? Maybe 2020 hindsight. I'm glad 2020 is in our rear view mirror. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> so, actually, um, yeah, I, I do. I like the question. I mean, I, I, 
I think the question sort of answers itself in a way because in, invariably, I, I, I love I love your book. I'm really enjoying it, and and one of the things you talk about is how a red light in your life can become a green light, and I would be remiss not to mention that because it's true. You know, we learn more from things that don't go well, <laughs> and 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 how and and what can I say? You know, it's not all a cakewalk. So I'm grateful for you know, the high notes and I'm grateful for the things that made me strong enough to meet the, the high notes with my, with my best, which that's the great thing about what we get to do for a living is that we grow by doing and being afforded the opportunity, you know, hello, the, what is the cliche opportunity for growth or something? <laughs> yeah. Got plenty of them. I got lots of them. So, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> And you've, and you've, it sure appears to be that see the seem that you've, you know, done, made, you've done well with those, evolved well with those and bravo to that. Um, um, this is a, a sort of a, I don't know if it's rapid fire. I don't know. I'm just interested for some reason this came up and I thought about asking you this question when I was watching the movie. Do you have a favorite decade? Wow. Well, in my own experience, or in your in in in, in this life before we uh, well i mean in my lifetime i really i i did enjoy the 70s um but when i was three years old looking at 1968 unfurl on the news really tenderized my heart i'm using that word way too much i guess that's the mot du jour is tender but uh, it, it, <laughs> it, it it did it, it really did um so I just felt like coming out of the 60s and into the 70s was was when my eyes opened up and I saw the world in a way that children can't unlearn happily. So it taught me a lot and I think we're back we're back in the learning curves mm -hmm. over the same territory <laughs> in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting for me to watch the next generations behind me experience it anew. I'm grateful I was even just a 3-year-old watching this but here we are at it again. So history does repeat itself. I mean, pandemics repeat themselves, right? Isn't it every 80 years or something crazy? So I, I like the, the innocence of each decade. Uh, there's always some naivete that's going on. Yes. And there's always uh, learning to play the violin on the street corner. You know, that, that thing of everybody has to endure <laughs> mm -hmm. what you're learning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I didn't like the 80s at all, really, was not a fan. But, you know, hey, some good music uh, along the way. But the 70s are my music. And I love my mother's music. And, and music to me is what conveys the decades because, you know, my favorite era to imagine, Matthew, is, when, is before we had invented a camera. Okay. I know this sounds really bizarre, but that, that's the universe that I crave. <laughs> well, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ways. In what well, ways? representation has to be through a through a different conveyance. You know, you have to tell it. You have to, things have to be made by hand. You have to touch it, see it, smell it, uh, hear about it. I don't know. Uh, it can't just. I mean, we've become so spoiled with this invention, and it's wonderful, and it's given us more than I can certainly unpack. But um, to uh, I've always loved prehistory before things were so, so well recorded. Yeah. I had this experience recently where we were shooting something and I ended up uh, shooting my scenes with two a pad on the left and right side of my head and a pad on my head and a pad on my chin. And I had, couldn't look down or up, couldn't move my head, but I had to do the facial expressions for 11 different scenes. Wow. <laughs> That's different. And I was like, so I didn't really need to be here, did I? <laughs> did, need me, did I need to actually be here on location? Um, and like, we got that. We're going to put that in the so-and-so. I'm like, oh, the stuff they could do in post. And the, yeah. you know, I, then the stuff that you go, you hear that that term you hear so often. Oh, we'll fix mm -hmm. it. Post. We'll fix it in post. I'm like, well, let's not forget to try and get the best actual reality we can and truth we can in While the frame without yeah tricks and, and, and what we can go wax the car later on. What, what, what do we got is, is, you know, is, is let's make sure I want, let's try to make sure that reality is still enough to get off on and go, you know, yeah, that's still really worth it. 
I like uh, it. Yeah. I, I believe in that too, especially photo shoots. <laughs> Cause that's, <laughs> that stuff's going to pop, you know, that's popping out sometime whenever, when enough people have passed away, the subject and the photographer and the rights pass on. And then, you know, they didn't CGI out, out your bra strap or something. And you're like, I, I would never have allowed that photograph to be taken consciously. So why would I trust that somebody's going to, you know, I know it's a strange thing, but I understand what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. You want to feel completely accountable for the end result as much as possible. Um, yep. Yeah. It's that's that we can feel it, you know, and it's tangible. Um, yeah. And you know what we, it's, it's wonderful. And you, you, you do this often. I, I believe that what you, uh, you know, whether you know you're intending to do it or not, is it's, it's seems like you never, I never see you try. I never see you trying on screen. Um, um, I never see, that's it. That's my best compliment. I don't really see you acting on screen. That's my compliment is what I'm trying to say. I, and I've done it before and, you know, I've, tried and i've tried and i've caught myself acting for and i'm over there going bullshit you know after i watch it but that's one of my biggest compliments to you you have it and that's, that's what a, i said that's earlier that's a good one and, and and we have witnesses that you said it to me so <laughs> i think i'm going to end on a high note there and scuttle away scuttle away into the tenderizing <laughs> talk with you. um super talking with you that's a uh, it was a, a fun fun to catch up um wonderful work on the film and with the character and always look forward to either speaking to you or seeing you the next time, whenever that is. Thank you. Thank you for just blessing me with your, uh, your attention and your, your kindness today. And, uh, feels good, man. Got to enjoy the moments, you know? Yes. yes. So yes. Mwah, enjoy your family. Thank you. Beautiful family. All right. All right. Peace out. You too. Okay.